It's time for them to bust slash overvalued guys. Dustin, name co, welcome to Fancy Smack Talk. Before we get into it, we're going to talk about it a little bit in all of our shows, but we we partnered up with Fan Saloon this year. We're running a uh, salary cap weekly league in our site this year. We're not doing the pick em anymore, so you will still have a chance to win a sweet FS t shirt. Go to the fantasy games or click on the link on our homepage. It'll take you to the, uh, to the page. We'll be up towards the top there. Join the free FST league. We'll be in there as well. Winner every week for an FST shirt. Brent, start us off. All right, we're going to start the bus off with Vincent Jackson. Now, if you look at his numbers, he was pretty solid last year when it was all said and done with over 1,100 yards and nine scores. He's not with San Diego anymore. He's now with Tampa Bay. But the real key thing is with Vincent Jackson, he is so up and down, it's, it almost drives you mad. And if you take out a non-PPR league, so you know regular standard leagues, nine times last year he would have scored less than seven points. So, you know, it's just the one thing is there is potential for him not to do well numerous weeks in a row. And it's not Philip Rivers on the ball anymore. It's now Josh Freeman, and there is Mike Williams there still. So a lot of mouse feed. Just, you know, be cautious. He's going way too early for our liking. Next, we got another receiver, and that's Pierre Garçon. New home with the Redskins. Decent year for him last year. He was starting to get things going. You know, he's shown some flashes of being a solid receiver. But we're just not sold on how many passing yards are going to be to go around out there with RG3. And I think that offense is definitely going to be better than it was last year. But we're just not sold that there's going to be enough yards to go around through the air. Especially with early reports that Santana Moss is looking pretty good. You still got Fred Davis out there. So, you know, we're just not that excited about Garcon this year. We probably would advise, you know, just letting him go on draft day. Another guy in a new home, and that's Mario Manningham. He's he's now with the San Francisco 49ers. You know, they already got Crabtree out there. They got Vernon Davis, and now Randy Moss is there as well. So Manningham, who clearly had that big catch in the Super Bowl, is getting a lot of hype because everybody remembers that. But there's still a lot of mouths to feed out there, and, you know, it's just it, sometimes the name, because of big plays in the playoffs, make them get drafted a little too high next year, and we're thinking that's the case with Manningham. Next is a guy we're gonna get some flack for. We know it, you know, be sure to leave your comments. Let us know about how much you hate this next guy we're gonna say on our <laughs> overvalued show. But that's Demarius Thomas. We agree this guy has a huge upside. He could have a big year for the Broncos, but so could Decker. You know, I think both of those guys have similar fantasy upsides this year. I think Thomas is the better overall receiver, but that doesn't necessarily always translate to best fantasy receiver. One of the main reasons we have Thomas on this list is because we like Decker four rounds later. We still think Thomas is getting drafted over a couple of guys that we wouldn't necessarily draft him over. So, you know, he's going about in drafts where we think he should, but we still think he's just going a little too early. He's going to be a little inconsistent this year, but the upside obviously is still there. All right, another guy is Bolden that's going to be on our bus slash overvalue list. And, you know, this is another name recognition guy who was with the Cardinals. He put up monster numbers. But ever since coming over to Baltimore, the numbers really haven't been there. You know, he hasn't gotten over 900 yards in any of the years. And last year, he only had three touchdowns. Torrey Smith's a young receiver on the rise out there. So, you know, don't panic in your middle rounds and see the name Bolden. Just grab him because you know it. Go with a higher upside guy at that point. Moving on, another receiver. We got Justin Blackman. Fifth overall pick this last draft. Went out to Jacksonville. You know, decent uh, receiving core going on out there. They got Laurent Robinson out there as well, so not too shabby as far as a one-two punch. But you still got Gabbert throwing the ball. Like, it's just not a perfect situation as far as what you want for a potential breakout for a rookie receiver. The, you know, the, the offense just isn't there for us to, to suggest drafting Blackman at any type of early to mid-round draft pick. If you want to take a flyer really, really late, go for it. He is a specimen of a receiver, but in our mind, it's a gamble. Yeah, Gabbert's terrible. <laughs> All right, going to move to a tight end. That's Colby Fleener. He's with the Colts. You know, he got drafted in the second round, and he's pairing back up with Locke, so everyone's thinking, oh, this is going to be a great young connection. His, his last year at Stanford, he only had 34 catches. I mean... <laughs> It's good, but that's not that great. True, 10 of them wore four touchdowns, so he's going to be a red zone threat, but the NFL game is very different from the college game. He might be somewhat of a security blanket for Andrew Luck, but regardless, don't. this isn't the tight end to wait on forever to target because you're going to pass on the high upside guys. And a guy like Jared Cook we like a lot more than Colby Fleener. Yeah, rookie tight ends, not so much. Next, we got Steven Jackson. Another solid year for him last year, over 1,400 total yards. 
But here's the thing that's really starting to get scary with him. Throughout his career, he's inching up on 3,000 touches. That is just getting a, a little lot. scary. Just think about getting hit in the NFL 3,000 <laughs> times and the, the wear and tear it's going to put on your body. And if you don't know if that's a lot, compared to some of the other big name running backs, you will be shocked when you see you know, how much fewer runs, uh, touches that some of these other running backs have. It's going to have to happen very soon as far as Steven Jackson breaking down. We think it's this year. Stay away from him unless he slips really far. All right, and the last guy I'm going to be talking about is the law firm, Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. He's now with Dustin's Bengals. And Yay. last year, <laughs> he averaged 3.7 <laughs> yards a carry on the Patriots offense. And everybody was back learning about Welker and Gronk and Hernandez. So if he averaged 3.7 on the Patriots, what, what is he going to do on the Bengals? And furthermore, he's going to be splitting with Scott. So people see that law firm name. They see the 11 touchdowns. So he's going way too early, we feel. Late round, sure, you can grab him and hope that, you know, he ends up getting more touches. But eh, stay away from him. He's not even worth drafting at the point where you'd have to take him. Yeah, he's, I wasn't too excited about that <laughs> one. But we'll see. Hey, he doesn't fumble. That's, that's yeah, one good thing. That's a little key. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we got Peyton Hillis. Not a very good year for this guy last year. He's got a new home with the Chiefs, and we've actually seen him getting a lot of love in some other expert rankings. We're not necessarily totally understanding. But Hillis only averaged 3.6 yards a carry last year. I know it was with a terrible Browns offense. You know Things could be better with the Chiefs, but you still got Jamal Charles out there who, if is healthy and can stay healthy, is going to be the main back out there. Hillis might get some goal lines, is going to get some short yardage work, but as long as, as long as Charles is healthy, we really don't see much upside with Hillis this year. So there you have it. That's our overvalued slash bus list or vice versa. So regardless, we're not saying stay away from all of these guys. If Vincent Jackson's really late, you're going to want to grab him. But we're just saying at the point where they're being drafted in these early mock drafts, we don't like their value. So that's it. Be sure to go onto our site. Check out that salary cap league. It is. You draft a new team every week. It's a lot of fun. We'll both be in there. I'll be dominating. So we'll see you in the forums as well asking for advice. Confidence!